the Solana Death Cross is on its way. I've been seeing Twitter and Reddit and YouTubers talking about how this is not the best thing ever and that we've only seen one of these before and that this could be, you know, the beginning of the end and blah, 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 whatever. And I just wanted to come on here today, basically just give my opinion, my opinion on what this means for Solana's price, how I'm going about it, and my overall expectations going into the future. So, of course, with that being said, let's go ahead. Let's skip the BS. Let's skip the fluff. Let's get straight into the good stuff. So, paying attention to Solana, of course, we all have known that we've been in a downtrend. It's no surprise to anyone that we have not, you know, we're seeing a macro downtrend as this thing is down 63%. And all the death cross, you know, the cross of two moving averages, especially the 50 and the 200 is to me, is a confirmation of a more macro downtrend retracement. OK, what it says is that this is not something that's going to be a quick recovery, in my opinion. It's something that may take a few weeks and may take a few months. It is a confirmation of the more, you know, the introduction and the stepping into the more long term recovery. It's it. But based off what we've been seeing in the price, we already knew that, okay? And so I just want you guys to know that, of course, everyone knows this is a lagging indicator. And yeah, the last time we did see that 50 go through that 200, we did see a big capitulation event in which the price did shoot down, you know, roughly, what's this, another, uh, you know, another 30 plus percent. But overall, it is not the end of the world. And I mean, just a few weeks after we saw this death cross happen back here for Solana, that was the beginning of recovery for the rest of the market. And do be aware that if this market takes off and Bitcoin takes off, Solana's going too as well. And so it's not that big of a deal. Now, with that being said, though, there definitely are some bearish implications from what I am seeing from the charts in the short term that say that, sure, this could lead us to see a bit of a capitulation event or fall back down towards $65. It is very possible. So let's talk about what it looks like if we are going to see that, how we can confirm that a break to the downside is coming, and how we could look for a break to the upside. Remember, our goal here isn't to predict the future, but to be ready for any move that Solana makes. I'm not a fortune teller. I'm a play reader. Okay, so looking at this thing, Looking at what we're seeing on the charts, we can clearly see that Solana has been in something of a descending wedge. Now, generally speaking, these things can have bullish implications. They can have bearish implications. And I feel like you can fit it into whatever bias you have. So personally speaking, I don't really try to guess and gauge where this thing is going to go. Now, more often than not, whenever we start to see a downtrend, and a descending wedge, we will start to see this thing just kind of continue back to the downside, right? That happens quite often, right? We start to see a descending level of support, meaning that the bulls are struggling. And if we get that confirmed with bearish divergence, that does typically, again, lead to seeing a continuation to the downside. But there are events such as back here in which we will go into these things in this nature, a descending wedge, right? And we will see a bullish resolution in which we go down, descending wedge, break up to the upside. So I'm not going to go ahead and say where this thing is going to go. But what we do need to pay attention to is where the breakout does come from. OK, and so considering the fact that we are kind of consolidating within this, it will be extremely important to pay attention to a few levels that will give us key indications of what's more likely to happen. OK. Now, since we are kind of measuring Solana based off of this macro Fibonacci move from swing low down towards 65 bucks all the way to our all time high back up here towards, you know, 260 bucks. What we know is that if we are to lose a 618 to 786 macro Fibonacci zone between 111 and 88 dollars, it becomes extremely likely that if we close on a daily candle below 88 dollars, that we will resort back towards our low in which created this Fibonacci retracement um, zone. OK, and so considering the fact that that means that if we start to see daily closes below $88, we may start to see, you know, that push back down towards $65. And considering the fact that we do have a death cross on the way, that definitely could be that little formula that pushes us to the downside, even though it's not even really anything significant, right? And so considering the fact that right now that is on the table and we do need to be extremely aware of it, you can also see, though, that we are holding up well at this point. OK, so, of course, we have the 786 level. As we did approach it, we did start to hit the brakes, hit the brakes, hit the brakes, and we did look to see that reversal back to the upside. The issue that I'm having with this attempt to work our way back to the upside, though, is that we are starting to see our RSI recovering, although the price is still falling. Right. And now, generally speaking, once your RSI reaches that overbought territory, which I don't really like to call it that, but it is what it is, that overbought territory, we will start to see that short term retracement back to the downside or a consolidation, right? And considering the fact that we are now back above 50, but our price is still falling more on a macro sense, that means that at any given point that this RSI maybe continues back up and we start to see this happen, right? 
and we start to see the RSI pull to the downside, that definitely can confirm the, con you know, that can be the confirmation of the breakout to the downside of this thing, because our room to the upside is becoming extremely limited as this RSI is climbing on the hourly and the four hourly. We're on the four hourly here, and you can see on the hourly time frames we are seeing the same thing, in which our RSI started back here and we've worked our way all the way back up to this quote unquote overbought territory although our price has not been able to make realistically any new highs throughout this entire move okay so considering the fact that we are seeing some bearish divergence in a continue in a pattern that can be considered a continuation pattern with a death cross on the way we definitely can be looking at a break to the downside that does look like something of 65 dollars and that the first sign that that's going to happen is if we lose 88 dollars we lose 88 dollars be very very vigilant of how we interact with the bottom side of this descending wedge because if it doesn't if it's so signs of not holding i am expecting this move back to the downside so what exactly will it take for us to work our way out of this thing well obviously we are going to need to see the break to the top side of this descending wedge is it possible yeah it's absolutely possible although we are running out of room to the top side there is still that room there and if you look at something like the daily rsi for example we have extreme extreme territory to recapture so even if in the short term for example we do see something of a quick break to the upside which looks like this we look like a break back up to 112 and then we start to really back test and hold some support as our shorter time frame indicators do cool off and reset themselves we definitely can look at that larger move back to the upside considering the amount of room we have to work on the rsi right and so i'm not saying at all that this thing definitely has to break to the downside but we do need to be extremely vigilant of the fact that the break to the downside here definitely is on the table so if we are going to avoid that again we need to see the break to the top side here and we are going to need to hold support outside of it that is what is going to counteract and invalidate a lot of the bearish divergence in which we are seeing on the shorter time frames if we are capable of seeing the break to the upside of this descending wedge boom and we hold this level as support or we break above 112 the you know the 618 zone and hold that level of support that again will allow these indicators to cool off and then we can start to see the more macro move back to the upside but until we were to see the break and the holding of support i personally wouldn't take the risk of getting in considering some of those negative catalysts in which we do have on the way okay and so overall if i was going to be buying solana i personally wouldn't be doing any buying until we were able to at minimum capture the daily 20 simple moving average as you guys can see that has been the level of rejection for a very long time we've not been able to hold above it we'll see the break above it we'll see the extension into the top of the bond band envelope we're unable to hold it we continue downward we're unable to hold it we continue downward we hit resistance down hit resistance down so considering the fact that we are either running into resistance or failing to hold support on top of this 20 simple moving average i'm going to personally be waiting until we can at minimum see the break and at least some support established above it for me to say okay this is likely a good time to be buying because historically speaking ever since november slash october we have been getting rejected off of this level but what one thing you can see is that if we are capable of finding these levels of support above that 20 SMA similar to what we saw back here it has historically shown that we are able to see some massive growth from Solana which I think will be you know kind of shown again and I think we will see that growth again one day but I need the confirmation of clearing that 20 simple moving average for me to be confident that we are seeing that growth and I'm making a justified purchase right so overall my opinion right now in the way in which I'm going about this is that we do have some negative catalysts on the way especially looking at this 20 and this 50 moving average they do seem as if they'll probably cross within the next probably week or so and so that is going to have some implications of where this thing may go in the short term especially when you mix it in with the fact that we are currently seeing some bearish divergence on the hourly time frames and four hourly time frames while we are in a pattern that could be considered a continuation pattern with the break side break to the downside of maybe as low as 65 dollars and although that is on the table we do have the possibility due to you know some of our more macro indicators for us to see a break to the upside but we will definitely need to hold support if that does happen in order for me to be confident that that is the bullish reversal in which we have been waiting for now i know that sounds like i'm saying it can go up or it can go down and there are going to be the dumbasses in the comment who say so you're saying it could go up or down yeah that's exactly what i'm saying our whole goal here is to, to to monitor these charts to see where these things go look for the confirmation either to the upside or to the downside and then make a play based off of our confirmations rather than just trying to be a fortune teller trying to be a future predictor a uh, future prediction because that's not what i do and that's not what i'm capable of doing of course and so 
So with that being said, just pay very, very, very close attention to where we go out of this descending wedge because it will have major implications of what the next couple weeks and possibly the next couple months have in store for Solana. Now, do remember, this market is still moving off of Bitcoin. So although it is important to be monitoring the Solana charts, you need to be pairing that with your Bitcoin analysis because even if we do see a break to the upside, a rejection on Bitcoin will lead to a rejection in the rest of the market. So keep an eye on all of that. Do stay tuned for all of the videos that I'm posting as I am trying to keep you as up to date as I possibly can as we do see things of importance happening. Of course, if you want to stay as up to date as possible, all you have to do is simply just smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you are new and I will see you all next time. Peace.